Hello YouTube, we're back with another video. Uh, if you're enjoying this English content, please let us know by subscribing to the channel. Let us know in the comments below and like the video. Uh, today I'll be tying a hair's hair variation, a hot tripped hair's hair variation as I call it. It's just a really simple pattern that has worked particularly well towards the latter end of this season. Uh, it's a, just a genuine fish catcher, pretty simple to tie and one well worth having in your box. What I'm using here is a size 12 jig hook with a 4mm tungsten bead. Uh, this is pretty much as large as I tie this fly and I'll go down to around size 16, 18 uh, as long as I can tie it to where it looks good enough. It fishes good enough as well. So just start your thread by the bead and move it backwards to roughly where the hook starts to bend. I'm using a hook that has a fairly short hook shank with a really wide bend so I really need to know this hook to be able to tie it nicely and not move too far back. Uh, for the tail, uh, this time I'll be using just tips of a teal feather, but I really use anything that has this natural barring, so mallard feathers, uh, partridge, even something like grizzly cock feathers, anything works just as well, as long as the natural barring is there. Just pluck off maybe six or seven fibers away from the feather. It has a slight natural curvature that wants to go up, so try to use that curvature and tie in a fairly short tail. I don't want it any longer than the body itself, and as I mentioned, the body is short on this hook. So you can just pull it in if you feel it's too long at any point. This is roughly what the tail ought to look like. You don't have to use a hook like this, I just found this hook to be really effective when it comes to fishing, it really grips onto the fish. Once the tail is secure, snip off the remaining fibers. And now for the ribbing of the fly, I will be using a unifloss in hot red. However, I found that the full strand of floss is just a bit too thick and it really dominates over the body. So I just split the strand of the unifloss into two to get a slimmer, uh, slimmer floss. Uh, you can use pretty much anything also in an orange color, uh, glow bright, uh, just orange time thread. Whatever you feel looks right. Catch it in on top of the hook and move all the way backwards to the base of the tail with your ribbing. Keep it out of the way for now. And now for the body, I'll be using a, a natural uh, hairs dubbing, rabbit body dubbing. I don't really need the spiky fibers too much for this, so any rabbit dubbing will do. And it will work just as well in any natural color. What I have right here is uh, closer to a natural ginger, but once again, if you don't have that, any natural hair dubbing will do. Just pick out some dubbing out of the pack, spin it on straight onto the thread, forming a fairly thin dubbing noodle that just tapers slightly towards the end. And form that body with touching turns of the dubbing loop of the dubbing all the way up to the bead. Now it's time for the ribbing. I really found that showing three to four turns of, of the rib is just perfect for this fly. If I get any more than, than four, then the orange floss just dominates the body and there's barely any rabbit showing through. So what I will do to make sure that the floss isn't laying too flat, I want it quite round. So I'll spin it between my fingers in one direction before I start winding it. 
keep the tail out of the way and just wind it, space it out as evenly as I can. Once again making three to four wraps and tying it off right there by the bead. Snip it off once it's secured with your thread. And the next thing I'm gonna do is a CDC collar hackle. Uh, all I need is a single CDC feather and uh, for sizes smaller than 12, I will also either use a much sparser feather or just a half a CDC feather is usually more than enough. However, for a size 12, I will use a full feather Put it into my CDC clamp, just like this. I won't be using the ends of the feather so I can snip them off, get them out of the way. Take another clamp. The clamps that I'm using always come two in a packet, so you'll always have that handy. Take it into your other clamp. And once that's done, just trim off the stem and what you have is a CDC ready to use. At this point you can either split the thread if you're using a thread that's easy to split or what I'm going to be doing right now is just forming a dubbing loop. Insert my dubbing loop spinner into the loop and insert the CDC fibers as high up the loop as I can comfortably go and start spinning them up. Get it to a point where the loop is spun up enough so that the fibers really feel like they're not going anywhere, they're firm there. And just start winding it like you would a soft hackle brushing the fibers back with each turn, putting one turn in front of the other. And if at any point you feel like you've got enough CDC on the fly, you can stop because not all CDC feathers are the same and sometimes you get a lot more fibers than others. Now, once you're happy with the hackle, tie it off with a couple of turns each side of the thread and snip off the dubbing loop. And you can either finish the fly as it is, or what I tend to do is just pick up a very tiny amount of the same dubbing that I used for the body. And this helps me clean up anything that doesn't look tidy at the front of the fly. So any CDC fibers that might be looking stray, I can lay them backwards, any loose thread that I don't want to be seeing on the fly, I can hide that. But I really just want enough to make a full turn around the shank of the hook, around, and there's not really much more that I need, so really don't take too much stubbing. This just tidies the, the fly and makes it look the way I want it to look. I really doubt that it has any effect on the way the fly works, but the flies are there to catch the fishermen as much as they are to catch the, the fish, so I feel like this fly just looks better that way. Now before finishing, I will add a little bit of varnish on the thread itself. Uh, this just makes it easier for me to finish the fly without getting it too messy. And with the varnished thread, make a four or five turn whip finish. Pull it tight snip off the thread close and now the only thing that I change after it's done is if I have some fibers that I feel are too long by too long I mean significantly longer than the tail I will just pull them back and instead of cutting I will pinch them off I feel like this provides a much more natural look than cutting the fiber 
and if there's one or two that are a bit longer that's fine it doesn't really affect the fly at all and that's that the fly is done once again if you enjoyed the video it means a lot to us if you subscribe to the channel comment down below like the video that really keeps us motivated to keep working harder and providing more videos to you and of course i hope you tie the pattern up i hope it brings a lot of good fish to you tight lines